Hi, this is Luke from MGN, and today we're going to look at Team Fight Manager. What is it? It's a simulation game where you play as the manager coach of a MOBA esports team. It's really popular right now, it's only just come out, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's worth your time and money. Popularity doesn't always translate. So, if you want to find out whether it is worth your time and money, stick with me. We're just going to go through it right now, and then you'll know. I will preface this review by voicing my bias. I am the target audience for Team Fight Manager. I'm a big fan of both of the genres on show here. I loved Game Dev Tycoon and games similar to it, which I believe Team Fight Manager is quite similar to in both uh, presentation and gameplay. And I love the MOBA genre. I have thousands of hours on Dota 2 and thousands more on Heroes of the Storm. As such, my impressions of the game might be drastically different from yours if you're neither a fan of the MOBA genre or simulation games like this one. However, if you're looking to try something different, expand your horizons, or you're a fan of either genre, well enjoy me for MGI impressions of Team Fight Manager. So what is Team Fight Manager? Well, as the name suggests, and like I mentioned in the intro, the player takes control of a MOBA esports team in the hope of pulling the team from the lowest possible ladder position in league, in the hope of coaching the players and managing the team all the way to being the best in the world. The game begins with some exposition about you, the player, and what life you've led leading up to the point where you take control. You've been a successful teamfight player, then retired from play and became a successful teamfight coach. Now, with a few challenges left, you've decided to try and take an inexperienced and unskilled teamfight esports team and make them the world champions. That's the goal. Is that journey entertaining? Is it told well? Is the gameplay surrounding that goal any good? Well, that's what we're going to get into. As usual, our MGN impressions are broken down into four separate but equal parts. First is the story. Look, sometimes simulation games like this have only like a skeleton of a story. They provide contents for your activities and let the gameplay carry the rest. This can be pretty disappointing for players that not only want to live out the life of a simulated counterpart, but also want a rich story that provides more than just a purpose for clicking buttons. Does Teamfight Manager fall into this crutch? If it does, is the context provided in the early exposition enough to carry the player's interest all the way through their playthrough? If there is a story, is it told well? Is there intrigue? Is there, you know, is it there or is it just phoned in? Look, I've already gone over the early exposition of the game, the one that gives you your initial purpose and helps you maintain interest from buying the game on Steam to playing it on your computer, but is that maintained through the game or is it left simple and alone? Well, we get there. Story. Next is sound. Sound is broken up into a few points. The first is voice acting. Is there any? If there is, how is it? Was the game casted well? Did the voice actors put on a good performance? If not, why isn't there voice acting? You know, would the game benefit from some quality voice acting? And does the game feel pretty dead without it? If there isn't any. The next is sound effects. We'll go over whether the sound effects for the game hit the ear well. Are they too repetitive? Do they genuinely sound like the actions they're supposed to? Or do they kind of feel like someone in their basement recorded a piece of tin foil in a dishwasher, put it in their game? The third element of sound is the soundtrack. A good soundtrack can make or break a game. So where does Teamfight Manager stand in terms of soundtrack? Is it good enough that you want to play it in the background whilst you're at work or you're studying or whatever? Or is it so bad that you mute the game every single time you start it up just so you don't have to endure it? Or is Teamfight Manager somewhere in the middle? Well, we'll get there for sound. Thirdly is gameplay. How does the game feel to play? A game mechanics introduced in a natural and easy to understand way? Then we're going to go over every facet of the gameplay that can be found in Teamfight Manager. I'll let you know the good points, the bad points, what's done well, what's missing, or what's done poorly. Similar simulation games are sometimes lacking in depth of gameplay, or the understanding to how to turn a job like coaching or developing into something that's actually fun for you to do recreationally. Yeah, the need or want from an audience to simulate the life of an esports coach might be there, but that doesn't mean the studio developing the game knows how to make that life actually fun and enjoyable as a game. So, does this hit the mark? Gameplay. Is it deep? Is it simple? Is the level of gameplay deep? Is that a good thing? Does that depth add purpose and enjoyment, or is it simply complex for the sake of being complex? If it isn't deep, and what you see on the surface is the entirety of the gameplay, is there enough there to make it worth your time and money? We'll get there when we get the gameplay. X Factor, that's our fourth point. 
and the X factor for this game is going to be longevity. X factor for MGN impressions change from game to game, review to, to review. These types of games often fall in the crux of, look I bought it on sale, I played it for a few hours, liked it, but then never touched it again. So does Teamfight Manager have enough content to ensure that doesn't happen, to ensure that it has some staying power? If it does have enough content, is that content actual quality? And does that quality transition to the game being worth in hours of playtime to how much money you spend on it? Teamfight Manager isn't overly expensive, but are we getting what we paid for? Are we getting more? Are we getting less? We'll see when we get to X Factor, that's point four, that's longevity. All right, let's get started. For story, we're gonna go with a soft three, maybe four, I'm gonna go three. I will say that something immediately noticeable about the game is that the story seems to actively contradict the gameplay. When we're given the exposition dump at the beginning of the game to give some pretext to our gameplay, we're told that the player, that's you and I, were a very successful team play, team fight player rather. And after a long and successful career, we've decided to take up coaching. And then after a long and successful coaching career, we just started, decided to start again from the bottom. My issue with this is that it implies team fight, the game has been a lot around for a very long time. And the more you play the game, you, the more you realize they've only just started to add more heroes and balance patches to the game since you've started a new coaching job. The game has existed for several years, but only starts getting updates when you be when you begin your career again. Uh, look, I, I know you don't really play these kind of games for like a rich storytelling experience, but come on. I don't really mind the introduction to why you're playing this game, but it just it feels mishandled. You're told you never lost the World Series as a player, you never lost the World Series as a coach. Just feels a bit unnecessary and it feels a bit over the top to have the player be the best at everything Edda. You could just be a coach starting out with the game and the game just coming out and it being starting to become more popular in esports team. The game is new, you're a new coach. I'd make the game and the introduction cutscene, it'd make it make a lot more sense. You're new, the game is new. Of course you have to start at the bottom. Of course there hasn't been any new heroes or major patches in the many, many years that it's been out. But instead, we just get the over the top version. That issue aside, look, at least the studio has tried to add a story to the gameplay, add some life and character to a simulation game, and they do get points for trying. But like I said, it just feels mismanaged, a bit over the top, and I can't really see the point of it being that way. Why not just, yeah, okay, anyway. Three out of 10 for story. Sound, I'm going to go 6 out of 10. Um, the sound effects are actually really intelligently done. You will need to become pretty quickly familiar with what hero ability corresponds to what sound effect. It doesn't have a great impact on gameplay, but if you want to fully enjoy the spectacle of watching the fights unfold, it just helps a lot. And it's done really well. The first example that comes to mind is the Swordmaster. His ultimate ability is really impactful and can turn the tide of fights. As such, you're not really going to want to miss the spectacle when it goes off. But sometimes, fights are so hectic that you can't, get out. you can't help but get lost in all the action. That's where the instantly recognizable and well executed sound effect of his ultimate ability comes in. You can tell what is happening even with the visual clutter that happens in MOBA games. By the sound effect, and that makes you watching the fights much easier. So kudos to the game, kudos to the team for having the nous to know that that's necessary and then also being able to pull it off. It's good. There is no voice acting, but the game doesn't really suffer for that, to be honest. You kind of expect no voice acting in these sort of sort of text-scrolling, pixelated kind of games. We've got pixelated art style and sound style, and as such, I don't really have a problem with it being read to text, as in opposing it having someone read it to you. It doesn't feel out of place, the lack of voice acting, and I'm not gonna deduct points for not having it. What I'm not a huge fan of, and what is deducted so heavily from the score, is the soundtrack absolutely possible to pull off a retro techno sort of Game Boy style soundtrack that is easy to listen to and actually worth turning up the sound for. Team Fight Manager doesn't have it though. It's not particularly inspired and it's really repetitive, like really, really repetitive. Really, really repetitive and repetitive. Honestly, it's more annoying than anything. And I can't fault you for turning off the music and, and just trying to listen for the sound cues in fights for the spectacle. You're not really missing much with losing the soundtrack. So that's sound. 6 out of 10. Next is gameplay. 
I've gone with a 9 out of 10 for gameplay. Team Fight Manager is addictive. It's fun and it's really, really deep. Your initial impression might be that there isn't much there, but the longer you play, the more the complexity of the game unfolds. This is done not to overwhelm the player as mechanics and points are introduced, but to let you wrap a head around a situation before the next one unfolds. It's like a good decision from the developer, I like that. I said the game is deep, but what does that mean? Well, you start off with a simple household, you've got a few gamers you're in charge of, um, and the team fights that are unfold are also quite simple. It's a 2v2 format, and there's only a few heroes to choose from. Then, as the, lo the longer you play as the game unfolds, you'll be in charge of bringing in new talent to your team, upgrading the household, upgrading the team's equipment, you'll need to ensure that the players you have are maining heroes that are relevant in the current meta. You need to ensure that the players who can play the new heroes as they're released. You need to adapt to the 3v3 and later 4v4 format as well. You're managing a roster of talent across multiple teams, you're ensuring you have the funding for all this, Look, there's just a lot there. The paradigm that you're playing to is always changing, and therein lies both the challenge of the game and the joy. Say you've invested heavily in bringing in a new gamer for your team because they play the new hero really well. The new hero has just come out, so you bring someone on board to play it. But then you bring that into the season, and suddenly the hero that was released isn't terribly meta. You're gonna have a rough season. On the inverse of that, if you've predicted which hero is going to play well in the coming season and invested both your team that way and tra training towards that meta, that can be super rewarding as the season unfolds. That is where the majority of the fun is to be had in Team Fight Manager. Planning well and adapting well is heavily rewarded, but not planning well and not adapting is punished enough to make the game a challenge. This makes the game really addictive. You want to get it right every time, and the only way to find out whether you pull it off is to play more and more. The buffs and the nerfs to heroes, the addition of new heroes, the new gameplay mechanics, they all aid to make the game both deep and constantly fresh. The game can also create stories and funny moments all of its own accord through the new gameplay mechanics that I mentioned earlier. One of them is streaming. Whilst playing through Teamfight Manager, my most popular player was Cornish. And as he was the most popular player, I made him stream constantly to bring me in the cash. He complained about the burnout of playing during the season and then also having to stream on top of that. I listened to his complaint and then I made him stream the next day anyway. How much fun you have in this game can be entirely up to you at times and those opportunities are just another reason that gameplay has scored so highly. My single complaint with the gameplay is that it kind of feels like stats of your players are largely irrelevant. You can gain stats by having your players play with heroes they're familiar with and through other factors like their traits and training. But when it comes down to the battles, these don't really feel terribly impactful. It doesn't feel like stats have much of an impact on the outcome of fights, much as like the draft and the meta do. Those are really important, but stats, eh. So I feel like that needs a little tweaking from the developer, because it doesn't really feel like it's working too well right now. Apart from that though, gameplay, 9 out of 10. The X Factor, that's longevity. I'm going to give that an 8 out of 10. And you might have guessed that since I praise the game for constantly changing and evolving with your playtime, that it would score well with longevity. Well, kudos to you because you're absolutely right, and I have. And that's the exact same reason the game has staying power. Look, I have around 30 hours as of right now played on Teamfight Manager. I wanted to fully experience the game before I wrote the review. I feel like I have for a playthrough. However, that doesn't mean that my time is over, nor yours. Yes, I've unlocked all the heroes, taken the team to the World Cup, obtained the equipment there is to obtain, but doing all that in a single playthrough isn't the end of the game. There's this genius New Game Plus feature. With this, you can do it all over again, but sort of dictate the terms in which the teamfight game is played. You can start out with 3v3 if you wish, you can set how often the patches are, how drastic these changes of the patches are, you can change which heroes are available when the game starts, how many are available, how quickly new ones are introduced, the game just gives you a lot more longevity on top of the constantly evolving nature of the base game through New Game Plus. Yes, the game will change as you play it, and it'll keep your first playthrough fresh, but once you've completed that first playthrough, what's the point of trying Teamfight Manager again? Well, this is it, New Game Plus. You dictate the terms of your playthrough to get even more hours out of the game. And for that, giving longevity, 8 out of 10. Alrighty, that's going to wrap things up for our review of Teamfight Manager and our impressions thus far. 
We're constantly posting new content on the MGN GG blog, YouTube channel, MG MGN TV. So if you want more information about Teamfight Manager or our opinions as we play through it more, well, you know where to look. If you want all the best gaming news, reviews, guides, more on all your favorite games, then make sure you're following us on both platforms, the blog and the YouTube. Thanks for checking out our review of Teamfight Manager.